Local productions on QTV are made possible with support from viewers like you. Thank you. Hello and welcome to Dateline Delta. I'm Mike Kelly, past chair of the Delta College Foundation Board of Directors. We begin today's show by going on a career quest and seeing how one Delta professor brings in area experts to help educate his class. We will learn what it takes to put together a student newspaper and discover how Delta College's radio station is increasing their listenership. To conclude today's show, we will observe the Computer Numerical Control, or CNC, program, and we will review the 2019 women's soccer season. Last month, Michigan Career Quest hosted their first ever Mid Michigan Career Quest at Saginaw Valley State University. The event was attended by more than 10,000 high school students, teachers, and counselors from an 11 county area. To tell us more about this event, we talked with Harvey Schneider, manager of Skilled Trades. My Career Quest, or Michigan, MI Career Quest, is an event that started by the Michigan Works in the Grand Rapids area, and they were so successful and so pleased with the results of being able to interest high school students in different career paths that the Michigan Works people wanted this to go statewide. So it moved from Grand Rapids to the Detroit area. They've had one up in the Alpena area and this past week was our chance to do it here in the Great Lakes Bay region. We had over 10,000 students attend this event that was held in the Ryder Center at Saginaw Valley State University. We had companies step forward to provide funds for transportation for those schools that maybe couldn't afford to send buses. We had sponsors for the event for lunch and volunteers and parking. Students came in not really knowing what to expect, but the focus of this was to give them some hands-on activities. So some of them directly pertain to the particular occupation or trade they were looking at, like in the medical health care. We had people from our physical therapy that had a wax-based dip where you put your hand in hot wax and it relieves tension and arthritis in your joints. The carpenters had a nail driving contest. The students, you know, something as simple as pounding nails. But while they were doing that, the carpenters were talking about different careers that they offer. Delta was a silver education sponsor, so we contributed to this event. We had over 80 people from Delta College participate. And my career quest really had five segments for students to explore. Healthcare, carpenters, of course, were in construction. Then there was manufacturing and there was agricultural ag science, and we had displays in all of those, plus IT. And as anybody knows, IT is integral to all of those fields. You can't get away from it. It's part of manufacturing, it's part of healthcare, it's part of construction, it's part of ag science. The real importance of having an event like this in our area is to make students aware of all the career paths that are out there, some that they don't even think about, they might go by it on a daily basis and not realize that these are careers that they could see themselves in in the future. So an event like this places them with the people that are doing those careers that can talk to them, and they can ask questions. And that was the whole focus of the day. There are so many people to thank that it would be impossible, but you know, a, a big thank you goes out to, again, the area of employers and businesses that came together and sponsored this event and made it possible for 10,000 students to have an impact on their careers. Delta College's Science 107 class is an introduction to technical programs in science. In the class, students are learning through not only their instructor, but also area professionals. For one hour each week, area professionals talk to the students about their experience in their chosen fields. To learn more about this collaborative way to educate his students, we talked to Dave Baker, professor of chemistry. 
My Sci 107 class is an introduction to technical programs uh, in science. It includes students who are involved in the chemical technology program, the water environmental technology program, and the environmental technology program. All of these students are focused on science careers with a focus on getting an associate's degree. Jobs available for these students include uh, working at chemical companies like Dow Chemical or with Consumers Energy or with small science companies like Xerus. So they have great opportunities as lab technicians. Some of the environmental scientists work out in the field collecting samples, collecting data and recording that and collecting it for the state. In addition, we have students who have opportunities to work for the water and the wastewater treatment plants we have in Bay City, Saginaw, Midland and all of the small municipalities in the Tri-County area. The unique aspect of this introductory course is that I only give two lectures. The rest of the course is focused either on the students giving presentations or talking about their own CVs, as well as we have area professionals coming in for the remainder of the time talking about their careers, their experiences, their job opportunities, and how to navigate employment in the Tri-County area with these skills. There is a need in the Great Lakes area for students with these qualifications to be employed by local employers. So there is a great need. It's a matter of getting, making sure they have the correct skills and they have the correct aptitude and capabilities. And I think we're addressing those with this introductory course. One of the things that we help out in this class with the Career Development Center is to go and talk to students about a variety of careers, but then also how to get employed in these fields, whether it's co-oping, interning, and the, the means to do that, the resumes, the cover letters, and the interviewing skills. And then we talk to them about more of the big picture, about where are the jobs in the community, how to get those jobs, and to prepare them so that they can go out and ultimately get a job in this field. We're very appreciative of all of the volunteers that come from area companies and businesses to donate their time to talk to our students. It's a great aspect of the program, great aspect of the course, and I think the students benefit greatly making connections, making contacts that allow them to succeed in the future. If you want more information on these very hands-on careers, visit the information on your screen. The Delta Collegiate, a student-run newspaper published here at Delta College, recently made some upgrades to its distribution methods. To learn about these and other improvements, we caught up with Crystal McMorris, Associate Professor and Coordinator of the Journalism and Integrated Media Program. The Delta Collegiate has uh, been publishing since 1961, the year that Delta College was formed. And as their motto states, it's student run since 61. Um, I am their advisor and I have the opportunity to work with about a dozen young journalists and actually students from many majors, not just journalism. The paper during the school year publishes uh, every other week and so it's kind of a two-week cycle. It starts with uh, students and the editors bringing their ideas to the meeting, uh, what they think is important to other students, who is the primary audience for the newspaper, and what the topics, the events, the um, issues that they want to address in the upcoming uh, print edition, and then we just kind of brainstorm how best can we get the information we need, fact check it, and put it together in a way most useful and in a timely way for the students who read our publications. Initially, the Collegiate was a print-only publication, and of course now we've become a multimedia news organization, which includes not only Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter is a big one, but also we try to get into some live streaming, and we've also begun a weekly student webcast, which is on YouTube called the Delta Beat. And so working with broadcasting professor Kim Wells, we were able to get the nuts and bolts together and make this student webcast, the Delta Beat, happen. This past April, our Delta Beat won the best TV newscast by winning the David Adams Apple Award in New York City. Congrats to Mike Peeper for producing all of this. And it's that kind of collaboration and flexibility and embracing new media outlets and opportunities that will help journalism students today thrive in the workplace of tomorrow. 
Yes. In addition to the national award, the students compete in statewide competitions every year and do quite well. So for at least the past 20 years, there's been a long tradition of uh, Delta College English faculty serving as advisor for the Delta Collegiate Student Media Organization. Joan Ram, a former Detroit News reporter, w was the advisor for many years. And then Karen Randolph, a former Cadillac Evening News reporter, advised them for several years, followed by Kathy Marleski from the Midland Daily News, and now me, who worked at the Bay City Times as the court reporter for many years. And so I have the blessing of having a, three colleagues who have been in my shoes and are very helpful in advising me on how to best advise the students on how to do journalism today with all the modern challenges and just trying to reach the audience where they are. And their goal is, again, just to reach out to other students and members of the Delta community and beyond and, you know, provide timely, accurate, reliable news and entertainment for our readers. On behalf of the entire collegiate staff, I would like to thank Crystal for all of your hard work in helping us run the paper. She provides very valuable insight with her experience, especially helps me since I'm the editor-in-chief that kind of helps me uh, lead and you know, stay on top of things. In a time of where we hear a lot about fake news, it's just thrilling to be part of such a dedicated organization of young people that are dedicated to bringing the real news to their readers. On December 1, 1989, Delta College started WUCX-FM, offering public radio programming to the Tri-Cities and Thumb area. Now approaching their 30th anniversary, WUCX continues to serve their listeners. To hear more about this news, education, and entertainment channel, we talked to Joe Yezak, Broadcasting Program Manager. The station went on air 30 years ago in 1989. It was a uh, joint operation between CMU WCMU and Delta College. So what we're doing is, if you're listening to WCX Q90.1, for the first half of the day from 5 a.m. until 3 p.m., you're listening to the station originating from the campus of Delta College. But then at 3 p.m. it switches over to CMU and then all the programming that you hear during that time fr frame is coming from uh, Central Michigan University. So it's a very unique type of a uh, organization. Our music selection deals with a diverse group of music, so of course we need a diverse amount of hosts in order to do these various shows. Rod Bieber, he does a couple shows that deals with more classical music and world music. We also have a show that focuses on the Hispanic community, so a lot of Tejano music, as well as some more modern Tejano music is played, usually on the weekends. We do a show that focuses on local artists or state artists. So it's from any genre, rock, metal, Irish. And we also do a show focused on Broadway musicals from the uh, last 50 years uh, with a little bit of a twist and highlighting what's coming to the area and what's being played in our local theater community. In celebration of our 30th anniversary, we have begun to stream. Uh, this was a project that has been years in the making. It's actually more complex than people think. It's not just turning on a switch and all of a sudden you can hear us on the radio. We've had to do a lot of work uh, with our equipment, including the new automation system, which will allow us to uh, broadcast 24-7. So instead of broadcasting, we're streaming 24-7. So we're very excited about that. We're in a whole new realm, and we're really excited about what the possibilities may be. Some of the advantages that we have by streaming now is that we have a lot of people that tend to travel or go south for the winter. Well, now they still have the opportunity to listen to Q90.1 through the stream by going to deltabroadcasting.org. One of the things that we're developing right now is we already have an app for Delta Broadcasting. We're in the process of moving the radio station onto the app so you can bring it along anywhere. Our ultimate goal is to place the radio station on the smart speakers. So that's how a lot of people are listening to at home. So we are heading in that direction. There's still some hurdles that we have to go through, some paperwork, some legal stuff that needs to be done, but that is our ultimate goal. If you enjoy listening to Q90.1 and been wanting to listen to it, 24-7, uh, 
Now you have the opportunity by going to deltabroadcasting.org and clicking on the listen button and you'll be able to hear us anywhere in the world. Through Delta's Computer Numerical Control, or CNC courses, you will learn the skills to operate computer-driven lathes, mills, lasers, and other machines prevalent in today's machining industries. To learn more about the CNC certificate program, we talked with Terry Morse, Associate Professor of Computer Numerical Control. We're really proud of our CNC lab here. We've been told it's one of the nicest ones in the country. Uh, we host the uh, regional Haas Technical Educators Conference every other year here. And we have lots of folks that come, come around and come through our program and, and uh, see it. So we, you know, we're real proud of it. Currently, we have 24 CNC machines in the lab. We have about 18 manual machines. Uh, our students are able to take classes in the daytime and in the evening. And uh, occasionally, we do offer classes on weekends. And we also offer those classes in an accelerated format in the spring semester. The CNC accelerated program that we offer in the spring allows students to get an entire certificate of achievement in 14 weeks and that gets them 18 credits that ladders towards their advanced CNC certificate. And those credits all go towards an associates in applied science. To better serve our community and the students, we've been able to add additional equipment to our program. We've recently acquired a water jet and it allows us to teach students how to cut uh, using high pressure water with an abrasive mixed in with it. Uh, we have strong partnerships with local air, uh, manufacturers. They allow our students to come on Fridays and do job shadowing. We also have partnerships where the companies place their equipment on our floor and allow us to teach using that equipment. This is equipment that we normally wouldn't purchase here at Delta College because it's very expensive and very unique but we do have uh, strong partnerships with those companies and it, it works out really well for our students who are interested in that as a career path. Students in our program are able to go out and find jobs in a variety of career paths. Uh, there's automotive, there's the medical field is getting really large in our area, there's the agricultural business, there's the solar and wind en energy business, so it used to be Michigan was a big automotive state, and we still are, but we've diversified, companies have diversified to be able to keep their employees employed and be able to have steady workflow for them as well. We offer lots of opportunity for high school students to come out here to Delta College. One of the ways that we do it is we host a uh, Skills USA competition and that's a competition where students come from local high schools. They compete using the machinery. We give them a project that they've never seen before. They have a timeline that they have to complete it in and they come out here and they have a good time. They, they win an award if they place in the top three. We also offer our student technical solutions in the spring. It's a chance for them to come out and see our program, to run the equipment and talk to the staff here to find out more about our program and what it takes to become a student here at Delta College and what the opportunities are once they get a certificate from our program. Because of the success of our CNC program, I have business contacting me from all over the state of Michigan that wants to hire our student. People think of Delta as being Saginaw Bay, Midland County. I have apprentices that come from a 14 county geographic area and they send their students here because they recognize the quality of our training programs and they want their students to experience our CNC lab which is state of the art. For more information about the CNC program, please contact me at the information you see on your screen. Delta College's 2019 women's soccer season is complete and an amazing season it was. Once again, Delta's ladies were able to compete in the national tournament. To give us a review of the season, we talked to Brad Amy, women's head soccer coach. Welcome to Dateline Delta and congratulations on another exciting season. Coach, give us a few highlights of the national tournament. Well, thank you, first of all. Uh, we had a great time. It was cold. The weather conditions were not the best, but um, our girls fought through it um, every game of the way. And uh, I'm super proud of them for how they, they handled themselves in that weather and the accomplishments that they made at the tournament. So there were three games, correct? Correct. The, can you... I'll give us just a little recap of each. 
Uh, the first game we went to double overtime. Um, we had uh, three minutes left in the game, and uh, Hannah Emmington scored the game-winning goal to win the game for us. And the second game went to a shootout, and uh, our keeper made a save, and they missed a couple of their penalty kicks, and that caused us to win the game as well. And then we went on to the national tournament, and we played very tough against uh, a very good team from Brookhaven uh, in, in Texas, by Dallas, Texas, and uh, gave them everything they could handle. And we had our own goal, and, and that kind of changed the things a little bit, and, and then we ended up losing 2-0. So, Hunter, um, what was the highlight of the tournament for you? Going into the tournament was exciting. I am a sophomore, so I experienced it last year. But this year, we had a game on Thursday, and we ended up, it was our first overtime ever, like, throughout the whole season. So it was very nerve-wracking, but also we knew we had to step it up. So it was a big changing moment to know that the national tournament is something, like, serious, and we were excited and prepared. Claire, what do you think? Um, one of the games when we went into uh, overtime and then went into PKs, we all had to think positive and know that we, were, we weren't going home and that we were still were going to be in the tournament. Coach, you've built on a run of very successful uh, seasons. What do you feel like is the common thread between all of those seasons? Uh, the biggest thing that we, we do with the program uh, we, we try to recruit kids that are no, not only good soccer players, but just great people. Um, and we do a lot of work with building characteristics of why people get along with each other and uh, how to work together. And, and that goes with, we have pillars that we follow in our on our team. And um, one of them is being a family. And I know it's a kind of something that they just throw out there, but our kids truly do care about each other and they'll go through anything and it shows when you get to the national tournament even if we went down like we did in a couple of games they're so positive that they just fought through it and um, and I think that's the biggest reason why we we are so successful is that how close we are and how well we work together. Claire what's next for you? Um, well I am a freshman right now so I will be playing at Delta again and so I'll just need to stay positive and we can just all stay, keep our heads high and keep it up and then win next year. How many um, girls are coming back next year? Do we, um, do we know yet? I think uh, quite a few. Yeah. yeah. Like probably about like... 13. Yeah, 13. Mm -hmm. How many are on the team? I don't even know that. 23 and one is couldn't play. Okay. And coach, what what will you be thinking about and working on in the off season? I know there isn't really uh, such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, continuing uh, getting girls prepared for next year, the kids coming back. Uh, we will have a uh, spring season like we normally do. Um, just getting the recruits in here to um, have us prepared for next year, um, and that's going really well. And um, we're gonna try to win a national championship <laughs> next time. Well, so. well. <laughs> How is the rec recruiting going? Uh, very well, almost too well. <laughs> <laughs> Success helps quite a bit. So um, we have some very talented kids coming in and uh, a lot of kids that are very interested in Delta College. Great. Hunter, what would you say to those recruits coming in? You're about to join not just a team but a family and it's it was the most memorable like thing throughout my life so far, and it's something you definitely will remember for the rest of your life. Claire, I know there's you know a lot happening when you're a student and an athlete. How do you how do you balance that? Well, if, when we have long bus rides, we spend a lot of time doing our homework on the way there, but we also have to like prepare ourselves for the game, so we just equal the time, and we also have like a study hall. So we have to do that throughout the week, and that helps like make me do my homework. And instead of going home and not doing it, so that helps. Mm -hmm. And what would what would you add? Just the same as what she said. Also, that there's your obviously the team is willing to help you no matter what. And if you have any questions, they'll guide you along the way because half of us have taken the same classes pretty much. So they'll just help you out, and you really not just succeed as a team, but succeed on off the field pretty much. 
Well, again, thank you all for coming in, and uh, we're so proud of the team, and thank you. and you guys just did a great job. Thank, thank you. you very thank much. I would like to congratulate Brad and the women's soccer team on their successful season. Now let's see what's on the Dateline Delta calendar of events. The Delta College Planetarium is hosting a series of shows during the month of December. For more information about these shows and events happening at the Planetarium, visit their website at delta.edu slash planet. The 29th annual DECA Holiday Arts and Crafts Show is happening on Tuesday, December 3rd from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. The event takes place in the main hallways at Delta College. Delta College is hosting a blood drive on Wednesday, December 4th from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. The drive takes place in the West Main Hallway. There is a FAFSA workshop at the Midland Campus on Wednesday, December 4th from 4 to 6 p.m. Please bring your 2018 federal tax return with you. Delta College is hosting the Allegro Series Concert on Sunday, December 8th at 2 p.m. The concert takes place in Delta College's Lecture Theater. For further information on these events or other campus activities, contact the Office of Marketing and Public Information at 989-686-9490 or visit our website at www.delta.edu. Well, that wraps up this episode of Dateline Delta. Please join us again on December 22nd when we highlight what's happening here at Delta College, one of America's leading community colleges. Now I leave you with the sights and sounds of Delta College. Setting up an offense, you don't see it as much as a team like Brookhaven tried to do in the opening game or even what Brookdale did a little bit in the second game. They're just letting somebody cut up field looking for that outlet that hasn't been there. Now we're on the back side with Janish to knock it to the side. Scrapping, looking for that opening goal. Throwing right to Hatmaker. Moves it up the sideline. Stays with Delta. Meisner. In the traffic. Howard on the clear. And for Delta here. Get back in this game. This is Rouse. Up towards the middle. Beautiful lead. Leading scorer, Emmington, fires and puts it home.